Okay, so I wanted to just kind of jump in and show you exactly how to set up your Airbnb account. So if you're curious about how much money you can make on Airbnb or um, really anything from if you have a spare room and you're just trying to maybe make enough to cover your rent or your mortgage for the month, um, or if you're just trying to actually grow an Airbnb business, uh, this is how you set up a property on Airbnb. Now, here where we're at, we're at the hosting platform. So <clears throat> not like you're staying as a guest. There's two different kind of sites you want to use. If you're staying as a guest, that's through the guest platform. If you want to go to Airbnb and set up your property as a host, uh, meaning you have a property or a room that other guests will be staying at and paying you to use your space, then this is the website you want to go to. I put it in the description of this video down below, so you can click that link if you want to be taken over to the host side of things. Um, so right here, let's go ahead and just talk about the first page. Um, this tells you basically how much you can earn. Now, right here, if you can see my cursor, my mouse, I have it set up in Santa Monica just for the purposes of this video. So you can type in any location you want to you go in. Um, you know, let's just keep it in Santa Monica for now. Now you can uh, present kind of your type of space. Is it the entire place? Is it just a private room? You can kind of determine what you have going on there. And then your bedrooms, how many bedrooms? Um, let's say we have a three bedroom property. So then go ahead and update the estimate. Now, of course, if you have more bedrooms and you have kind of a bigger place available, that's going to be able to maximize your profits. You're gonna be able to make a lot more money. Um, as you can tell for a seven night stay, it just kind of estimated based on the general consensus of the other properties in the area, how much money you could earn through Airbnb um, for a seven night stay. So let's go ahead and just go with that in Santa Monica. Then we'll go over here to the top right and it says Airbnb setup. We're gonna click that. And here we go. It already has me logged in. So we're gonna hit create a new listing. We're first gonna have to tell them about our place we're going to have to list a couple things to make it stand out. And then we're going to finish up and publish. Now, I probably won't be going through every single detail here, but I'm just going to show you kind of the basics for the purposes of this video. And you can go in and for your property, you can enter your own description. You can put in your own photos, etc. So right off the bat, it's going to have us tell them, tell Airbnb a little bit about the place. So we'll go ahead and hit next. Is it a house, apartment, a barn? You kind of have all these different options to choose from. Remember when people stay with Airbnb, they can actually filter their results based on what type of property they wanna stay at. A lot of people that are traveling, they might wanna pick a unique property. Um, it's kind of funny that they have cave in here. I don't know what some of these things are. Um, that's pretty interesting. But so, you know, if you have a tiny house, like one of my properties is a tiny house. So I would have listed it as a tiny house. Um, all kinds of stuff. So let's just go with your standard. Let's say it's a house. We'll hit next. And now is this property an entire place? Meaning when the guest stays, they have the entire place to themselves. You're not present. You have another, you know, property that you stay at, or is it a private room? Meaning that the host or yourself is going to be at the property. And this person has a private room, whether they have a private access or maybe they share a kitchen, you know, things like that. Um, but they'll know that, you know, based on if it's a private room, they'll know that it's, um, that you you or the host is actually going to be there. And then a shared room, of course, um, think of something like a hostel or something where they're sharing a room with other guests. They're not sharing a room with you, the host, it's just sharing it with other guests. So let's select entire place. Again, you'll be selecting these options based on, um, based on where you're at. So let's go with Santa Monica Boulevard. Again, I'm just kind of keeping it consistent. Um, Santa Monica Boulevard, okay. Boom, 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 boom. I think it's, um, I'd be having a select an actual address, I think. Oh, I think it's one of the zip code. Ooh, okay, let's find out. It wouldn't let me hit next, so let's do 90291. Oops, wrong page. Okay, so it just needed the zip code. 
So then you can scroll down here. Now you can choose, you can click this box on or off. This is your preference. Show your specific location. So you can make it clear to your guests where your place is located. They'll only share your specific address, like the street address, once that guest has actually made a reservation and confirmed their reservation. So you don't need to worry about people who are just browsing on Airbnb, having your exact location. Um, but you can have it, you know, show it to them um, once they've confirmed their reservation. So we'll keep that on. Go ahead and hit next. Okay, is the pin in the right spot? It's just asking you to verify. We'll say yes. Some basics about your place. So this is where you're going to go down and select all the different options of your property or your private room. So how many guests do you allow? Um, this is basically determined by how many beds you have, right? So let's say you have two beds in this three bedroom property. Um, so you're going to sleep four guests. Now also remember if you have like a pull out sofa or pull out couch, um, oftentimes the way to maximize your profits is to allow as many people as possible to sleep in one space. So let's say you have a three bedroom house, each bedroom has um, its own bed. And then maybe in the living room, you have a pull out sofa that can also sleep two people. So that would be a way to easily have a property be able to sleep eight guests. Um, bedrooms, again, let's say it's a three bedroom property. Let's say it has, uh, let's say it has two beds, bathrooms, one bathroom, sure. Make your place stand out. So what are the different qualities of your property that people are going to want to actually um, stay at your place? So go down through here and just select different stuff that yours has. Lots of people want to stay at a place with a pool or a hot tub. Um, you know, do you have safety items, smoke alarm, first aid kit? All that stuff is super important. But you want to take your time when you're going through these things because um, as a guest, you know, their experience really does come first. And if you have everything filled out where they know exactly where they're going to be staying, they know kind of the safety um, precautions that you've taken in place, um, then that's going to be somewhere where they feel comfortable staying. So let's go ahead and find, I don't know if I have any photos of my property actually in here. Let's see, desktop. I might. Okay. So let's put um, this property it says at least five photos, so let's add more. We'll add a couple. Mm, okay. And then you want to put, um, remember when you're going through this, you want to put pictures of the inside and of the outside of the property, just so people know what they're getting themselves into. You also want to put current pictures, you know, and then a lot of times, you might be renovating your property or maybe you've changed the paint colors, whatever it might be. Make sure your photos are current. That way your guest knows kind of um, what they're getting into. Now let's give your house a title. Okay, this is super important because the title is going to make your property stand out. So when you're titling your property, and we can get into this in later videos as well and go more in depth. But um, when you're titling a property, remember to put any sort of basically big reason as to why people are going to be staying there. So um, for me personally, I live really close to a big stadium down the street. And that's why a lot of people come to visit. So I would put um, next to stadium. Oops. Next to stadiums. You can use emojis. Um, we'll talk about that in a different video. You can put emojis in your title. Airbnb kind of has a policy where they say not to do it. So if they kind of slap you on a wrist, they might have you remove those um, emojis. But I will say that it does help your property stand out above the rest. So if you want to try it, um, you know, you're more than welcome to use an emoji. And if they say, oh, don't do that, then you just can't use emojis. Um, so we'll say next to stadiums. Now you do want to fill up the whole kind of context here. So we'll say next to stadiums. We don't want to keep our title short. We want to use as much space as possible. Uh, we'll say tiny house. Tiny house, um, uh, modern, minimal, spacious, spacious for a tiny house, you know, et cetera. But put as many kind of keywords that you think people are going to be looking into. Maybe you want to put 15 minutes oops, from downtown, right? Put something like that so people know when they're clicking on your listing exactly kind of what that's going to entail. If they're traveling to the stadiums and your title actually has next to stadiums, that's going to be a big attention grabber for them. 
Okay, so it looks like I put too many words. Modern. Oh, wow, I put a lot of words. Okay, so. Or I put way too many words. Yeah, I guess uh, make sure when you're... Um, make sure when you're putting your title. They may have changed that. I, I feel like my title is a lot longer than that. But let's say, um, you know, make sure you're not going over the word count. All right, so describe your property. So is it unique? Yep, peaceful. Again, pick whatever applies to you, but take your time on this. Now your description, this is something where, again, it's the first thing people see when they look at your property, right? So they're gonna see the title, they're gonna see the photos, and then they're gonna see the description. So this is where you're really curating what type of experience someone's gonna have in your place. Um, so again, you can put, 15 minutes from downtown. You can put some of the attractions that it's close to. Maybe you're close to a zoo or nightlife or bars, restaurants. Um, let's say you're by the beach, you know, if you are in Santa Monica um, or anywhere else that's, you know, coastal, put next to the beach or beach access. Um, we'll go into this in another video as well because there's literally so much to cover in the description but it's gonna be a lot longer than this. You have 500 words, and I would recommend really using that 500 word um, kind of limit. So after this, you're basically finishing up and publishing. So we're going to set our nightly price. How much do you wanna charge um, per night, right? So again, you're gonna to have to do some market research, and I'll show you how to do that in other videos, but um, when you do your market research, remember that there's a big difference on nightly price versus, um, or, you know, between if you have just a shared space or a shared room versus an entire unit. So this property that um, we kind of played with here was like a three bedroom, entire unit place. So we can charge a lot more for this property, but you're also going to have to do some market research about the other properties available in the area. So I'll show you exactly how to do that again, using a program or software I like to use. Um, that basically gives you all the data from your area. So it shows you exactly, you know, how much other people are charging for uh, properties that are similar in size or in similar in how many bedrooms. So you can really stay competitive with the market, you know, exactly what everyone else is charging and you know how much you're going to charge as well. Um, so try to, you know, keep this number um, relatively reasonable for you. You don't want to go too low, but you want to stay competitive with the market as well and still make sure you're able to actually make that income. So sure, let's go with 303 a night. It says, already gives you some details here. It says places like yours in your area usually range from 227 to 378. And then you can select down here, um, as you're building your account, I would recommend doing this when you're brand new to Airbnb. But as you're setting up your account, if you wanna get booked faster and just get the ball rolling, right? Which is what you wanna do. You can offer 20% off to your first three guests to help your place stand out. So this is gonna boost you up in the algorithm. It's going to tell your guests that you're giving a discount and it's going to help your place get booked a lot faster. And then, of course, after those three guests, once you've got the ball rolling, you can take off this discount. It's, this is only applying for the first three reservations. So we'll hit next. OK, one last step. It's going to ask you if your place has security cameras, weapons or dangerous animals. Um, so let's say our property doesn't have any of these. <laughs> then we'll hit next. Review your listing. So here we get to actually see what we put in. We get to see what we're charging. Remember, we selected that 20% discount. And then looks like all we have to do is set up our cameras or set up our calendar, I mean. Okay, and there it is. It says, congratulations, your, um, your uh, property is basically listed. And then this video actually is um, pretty cool. So I would recommend, once you go through this process, watch that video. It's the... Um, I was going to say the owner, but it's the CEO basically kind of welcoming you to Airbnb. And he has some really good tips that he would offer as well, as far as um, kind of building this journey for you and what you can do to maximize your profits. Um, so you can hit let's get started on the bottom and that will kind of walk you through a little bit more of that journey. This takes you directly over to the hosting platform. Um, so it looks like I do need a couple more details required to publish. Now, again, that was a fake property, so I didn't actually think it would let me publish it. And yeah, it looks like it's flagging it just because I didn't put hardly any details in it. And I used a fake address. Uh, so when you put yours in, just make sure you, you know, go through the whole thing. 
Um, but that's exactly step by step of how you set up your uh, Airbnb account through the hosting platform. Again, if you're going directly to the hosting platform and not the guest side, you can use the link in my bio that will take you to the hosting website. And that's where you get to set up everything. Um, now I will be making other videos that go more in detail about the descriptions, the pictures that you want to take. Um, we can go more into the title as well and a couple other things that really will dive deep. But I wanted to keep this video pretty short and sweet and concise for you because I know a lot of you just are getting started in the Airbnb space. I don't want to overwhelm you too much. But again, really simple. Airbnb just walks you through the whole process. So that's how you set up your property. Hope you enjoyed this video. And um, please like and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content and figure out how to become profitable on Airbnb in 2023.